Everybody turn to First Timothy four. I named this message um, "Suicidal Members" for a reason. Because <clears throat> one, if you name it "Kamikaze Members," people don't know what you're talking about. And if you name it "Explosive Members," they throw up a bunch of red flags on YouTube. So I named it purposely "Suicidal Members" because there is a lot of members in the body, specifically. Um, that are committing suicide and unfortunately it's by the words of their mouth but it's also because they believe the crap that they literally spew out of their mouth and I'm gonna to explain today the way Yahweh explained it to me and showed me um, how it works how how people drift so far from the scriptures and how they drift so far from for lack of better words reality that they don't understand like we were talking about earlier the, the double side or the other side of the coin um, <clears throat> like I was telling you guys last week this message he it, it was it, it wasn't even two seconds I mean by the time I said huh it was that it was done I mean it was that quick it, it was like just an instant download of this message and it was it was scripture for scripture and there was a lot more scriptures involved um, but for the sake of time I'm not going to go through all of them but I mean everything everything this message is backed up scripturally so it's not like I'm pulling it out of thin air and it can't be checked out it can't be double checked or whatever it can be you just gotta go back and look it up um, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to use a couple of scriptures or a few scriptures. First uh, Timothy four, <clears throat> and I'm going to go through this and explain some things because most people don't get. Or I should I should say the the leaven does not get. Um, the fact that the scripture is speaking of a specific type of people in the last days and they try to equate it to for lack of better words the mother church the Vatican when they don't understand that it's speaking against them leaven is not um, what we take in it is but it isn't Leaven is a people. All right, leaven is what we spew out of our mouths. If we are leavened, that's all we will preach is leaven. If we are unleavened, that's all we'll preach is unleavened. We are either leavened bread or we are unleavened bread. The Passover, and I could take you back into it and show it to you, which I might next Saturday. But leaven pertains to what you are, who you are. And whether you've been circumcised or not. And I'm not speaking of circumcision in the flesh, but that of the heart and in the spirit. Anyone who was leavened during the Exodus and the Passover, they experienced the loss of their firstborn. And and that pertains to the simple fact that that judgment comes to the firstborn because they refuse to accept his firstborn and this Passover you will see and I, I can you can mark my words on this you will see a lot of firstborn hit the dirt especially that of the messianic Jews and that of the Christians you will see a lot of their firstborns hit the dirt and when I say hit the dirt I'm talking about going into the grave because they have not chosen to accept his firstborn it has been marked out throughout the scriptures it has been prophesied witnessed testified there is too much evidence pointing 
to who his firstborn is, and yet they still condemn them. They still speak evil of them, and because of that, and because they won't let him go, and that's the key word, because they will not let him go, they will not let them go and, and sacrifice in the Yahweh. He's going to take their firstborn. All right. First Timothy verse or chapter four verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, or expressly, that in the latter times, that is right now as we speak, the latter years, some shall depart from the faith. And I want you to, to take this word faith, because I'm going to explain it in depth today. Sitting down, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, or believing something or assuming that you know something or assuming that you believe something is not faith next week we're going to have a message or I should say next Sabbath we're going to have a message on the wrong faith because too many people are following the wrong faith not realizing not understanding that there are two types of faith there is a faith of the flesh, there is a faith of the spirit, and the faith of the flesh will lead you to death. The word faith simply means a moral conviction of right and wrong. It is not a belief. It is not an assumption. And many times, many times in the scripture, we see the word faith mistakenly translated as the word belief, and it's not. They are not the same word. It literally means a moral conviction. In other words, in order to believe Yahweh, you have to be morally convicted to believe Yahweh. In order to obey Him, you have to be morally convicted to obey Him. I've heard so many people say, oh, well, I choose to do this and I choose to serve Him. You don't choose. You don't have the ability to make a choice. Does everybody understand? You were not created with a free choice. You were deceived into believing you had one. That doesn't mean you have one. You either are obedient to Yahweh and do what He commands, or you are serving the wrong God, or the wrong deity. There is no other option. There is no gray area. There's only black and white. Just like there is on a chessboard, there is only black and white. And it literally is a chessboard. It is two kingdoms fighting against each other. Alright, now watch this. <coughs> now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter years, or days, or times, some shall depart from the faith, or the moral conviction. They shall depart from the moral conviction. I want you to get that, make that sink in. Some shall depart, shall depart from the moral conviction. They already have. Instead, they are following assumptions instead of going back to the moral conviction. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute because there are so many Christians now that are ex, ex, what's the word? Um, accepting homosexuality and homosexual Christians, which in the eyes of Yahweh, that should never be accepted. All right? He said it himself that homosexuality is an abhorrence to him. It is an abomination. Abomination. All right, now watch this. They're giving heed to seducing spirits and a doctrine of the devil. I like how the Greek, or I, I should say, I like how the King James made that a pluralized word. 
devils instead of looking at it and seeing that it was a singular word. There's only two doctrines that run through the earth. You forget, Yahweh is not the author of confusion. Who is? Satan is. So it's only one doctrine of confusion. I guarantee you, if you took the Church of Christ, you took the Baptists, you took the, the Pentecostals, you took the Assemblies of God, took all their, their, their ideology, their theology, combine them all together it would be one doctrine it'd be the doctrine of confusion you can't have that many different doctrines there's only two in the earth the word says they still, the they still fight and that's because they don't see the other side of the coin alright now watch this speaking lies and hypocrisy now I want you to write this word down because the word speaking lies I, I, I don't know why nobody has ever bothered to go back and study the Greek on these scriptures because it explains everything in detail speaking lies is the word <clears throat> pseudo logos pseudo logos and it means an, an adulteration of the logos or a twisting of the Logos. P S E U D O L O G O S. P S E U D O L O G O S. Pseudo Logos. And it means the exact opposite of Logos. So it's a perversion of the Logos, turning it around backwards. What is rapture? It is a pseudo logos. It is the opposite twisting of resurrection. Scripture says, and this is in 1 Thessalonians 4, that when he descends, he's bringing the saints with him. How did we get the opposite? We're going up there to him. Think about it. Every one of their doctrines is completely the opposite of what it actually is. How did we come up with the name Jesus Christ when it's an, it's an anti-Messiah? The exact opposite of Yahshua, Messiah. Is everybody following that? John and Paul both prophesied. Both prophesied. You got two witnesses that someone would come to replace the Messiah of Israel. A Romanized version did. Hello? Now watch this. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Hypocrisis is hypocrisy. And it literally means acting in deceit or dissimulation. Acting under a feigned part. Now that word hypocrisy should have never been used for that right there. Do you know what the word hypocrisis is? Everybody here should know what the word crisis is. No. It means judgment. So hypocrisis would be the exact opposite of judgment acting against judgment how many churches have preached judge not lest you be judged don't you judge me you don't know what's in my heart that is that is hypocrisis don't you judge me because you don't have the authority to when the word says I have all authority to the word told us to ex or to execute righteous judgment so why aren't we because they don't want to be judged it's the same way as saying oh well we're all sinners and there's no way you can stop being a sinner it's so you cannot judge them so they can keep doing whatever they want to do is everybody following? watch this having their conscience 
Now the King James says seared with a hot iron. The actual word conscience is a moral consciousness or a moral conscience. And the word seared with a hot iron literally means cauterized. What happens when you cauterize a wound? What? Okay, now wait a minute. Why would your moral conscience need to be cauterized? No. It means that it got separated, and while it was separated, now, mind you, what separation is? It's marismos, mm -hmm. circumcision. So while it was circumcision, they let a little bit of truth in, and they cauterized it. That's as far as they went. They got just enough truth to survive on, and they went out and started preaching it. Look at all the church fathers, all of the Catholic church fathers, and look at exactly who they were, what they were, who they were disciples of, and you will find, and even in their own research, they were not actually disciples. They had spent, at best, maybe five days or five, five sermons or messages under one of the apostles, and that is it. That is not enough to get the Spirit and get discipline. Yet all the churches of the world lean on their theology. Think about it. Now watch this. Forbidding to marry, and I looked up the word marry, and it's gameo, G-A-M-E-O, and it literally means to marry a wife. Forbidding to marry a wife, homosexuality. It is okay for them to sleep around with men, to, to have spouses and husbands as men, but it, they are forbidding marrying a wife. It is the same word found as tolerance. They are allowing tolerance. People, we're in the last days. And as I said before, you will see this Passover, a lot of the firstborn start perishing. Because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now watch. Notice how and commanding is italicized. So they're not commanding. Watch this. Forbidding to marry a wife, or forbidding to marry abstaining from meats now that's a big difference when you put the word commanded it looks like those that are forbidding to marry are commanding those remind you when the guys wrote the, the King James Version of the Bible they were also speaking against the Catholic Church in 1600s they all believed that the Catholic Church was the daughter of Babylon and it wasn't it was the mother. But that's not the point. Watch this. Which Elohim hath created to, re to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe. Now again, the word pistis, let me show you, is the same word faith. Found in verse 1. What did I say it was? It's the moral conviction, not belief. Hello? Watch. Forbidding to marry, abstaining from meats, which Elohim hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which are morally convicted. and know the truth I want you to write it down the morally convicted know the truth that's what it just said did it not
Now watch this. For every creature of Elohim is good and nothing to be refused if, won't you circle the word if, because it's not found in there. And there's a reason why I want you to circle the word if. Because if you throw the word if in there, it changes the meaning of the scripture. In other words, it would be okay to eat this and that if you were thankworthy or thankful. But that's not what it says. This is what it says. For being American, abstaining from meats, which Elohim hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which are morally convicted... And know the truth, for every creature of Elohim is good, and nothing to be confused, or not confused, nothing to be refused, but received with thanksgiving. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Everything is to be received with thanksgiving, regardless of what it is. For it is sanctified by what? There's the word again. It is sanctified by the word. You're telling me that the word sanctifies pork? Huh? What did we just read? That nothing of Elohim that was created is to be rejected. If he created it, is it not sanctified? By the word, yes it is. If we are walking the word, obeying the word, and doing what the word says, yes, it is sanctified. Now, does that mean, oh, we, we can still eat, we can't eat pork, or we can eat pork? Again, it goes back to your moral conviction. If you are morally convicted that it's wrong, then don't eat it. If you are morally convicted that it's a spiritual matter and not physical, then don't eat it. Did you understand what I just said? There is a swine of the flesh, there's a swine of the spirit. There's two sides to every coin. Now watch. It is sanctified by the word of Elohim and by prayer. So not just by the word, but by prayer also. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. The word minister is diakonia, or diakonos, which means a servant. Thou shalt be a good servant of Yahshua Messiah, nourished up in the word of faith, in the word of moral conviction. So what is the word for? It's to convict you morally. What is another word for conviction? Judgment. Hello? So if you are morally convicted, what is the difference and I'm going to explain this real simple, real easy. What is the difference in the Levitical priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood? Close. Under Levitical, men who had fault could judge you to death. Under Malik Zedek, the Spirit himself judged you. But it was unto life. So we're following that. When he judges you, it is to bring you to eternal life. It is not to condemn you to death. That's why Paul said we are no longer under condemnation. That means under the political judgment of death. But now this time, we are brought into life through the Spirit. Does that mean we are no longer under the law? No, it doesn't.
Does that mean that, well, we're now under the Ten Commandments rather than all the 613 commandments? No, it doesn't. Their, their job is to do the, both the same thing. Like I said, there's two different sides of the coin. What they're preaching in the churches out there is no different than what we're preaching in here. Did you know that? All we are doing is looking on the spiritual side of it rather than the flesh. That's the difference. We see through the veil where they don't see the veil. Now watch. <clears throat> Nourished up in the word of moral conviction and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather unto righteousness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but righteousness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Now I want you to see this word, because I've heard this preached just about all my life. Bodily exercise profiteth little, meaning it's of little use. It's of little profit. How many times have I heard my mom say, oh, but the scripture says you're not supposed to be exercising. You've said that to me several times. That's not what it says. Yes, you have. That's not what it says. The actual Greek says bodily exercise is profitable, but little. In other words, it is good for your body to be exercising. It is good for your body to be up moving around. Because if you don't, your members will die. And let me explain what he showed me. When an organ no longer feeds, when it no longer gets nutrition, when it no longer gets blood, it starts feeding on itself. When it doesn't get the vital minerals, the vitamins, that it needs it will start feeding on itself. So is a member of the body. When it doesn't get the word that it needs, it will start feeding on its own crap. Is everybody following? The members will begin feeding on themselves. This is leaning on their own understanding. This is what a lot of the members of the body are doing today. This is a literal committal or committing of suicide because you eat yourself to death. Jane knows. Tasha knows. You do. That organ will end up feeding itself to the point where it dies. And then it's useless. And then what will happen when that member dies? the death in that one organ will start spreading to the rest of the organs. Go straight all through the body. And then what happens? The body dies. The whole body dies. Why do you think the word says we're supposed to cast out that member? So it doesn't start infecting the rest of the body. Now watch this. So I'm going to show you this. It's real simple. The easiest, easiest thing to comprehend. Watch. I'm going to show you how it starts feeding on itself. Verse 7. But refuse profane and old wise fables. Number one, gossip. That is the number one killer of a body member. What? Verse 7. First Timothy 4 7. Is everybody hearing me? Wise fables, which are their stories, gossip. Oh, so and so did this, and so and so did. Gainesville is the, I would have to say, Satan's seat is in Gainesville. It is the worst for wise fables, the worst for gossip. And that's why Yahweh will condemn it. And it will. Its destruction is coming. It's only a matter of time. Now watch this. And exercise thyself rather unto righteousness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, or 
Let's read it the way it actually says it. Bodily exercise profits, but very little. But righteousness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor. I want you to highlight the word labor. This is why we labor. This is why we labor. To get rid of the wise fables, to get rid of the gossip, to get rid of the carnal flesh. Why? You guys may not see it in the spirit realm, but if this member starts eating on itself and dying, it affects the whole body, spiritually. And it's the same way with Randy Shank. It's the same with every member. It's the same with everybody. You get one infection in it, it will start taking the whole body down. Why do you think he had to cut off Israel? Why do you think he had to give her a divorce? Because she was going to infect the rest of the body, the rest of the world. Hello? Now, did he cut off Israel? No. He cut off Jacob. Remember, you got to go back. He said, I will choose a people that is not a people. And I will choose another, and I will unite them with the house of Jacob. All right, now watch this. For this purpose, or for therefore, we, we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in living Elohim, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that, what? Are morally convicted. Did he just say especially? You ought to feel honored if you're morally convicted. Verse 11. These things command. Command, command, command. I'm sorry. What did he just say? That is a commandment. These things command and teach. So we're commanded to get rid of the gossip from out of the body. By any means necessary, even if it means getting rid of the last member of the body. You've got to get rid of the infection before it spreads. Right? Now watch this. Matthew 5. I'm going to read 29 through 30 because I'm just showing you what he said to do with the members. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. In other words, if the right if the right eye is the one that's infected, get rid of it. Cast it from thee, for it is profitable profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and that not thy whole body should be cast into the grave. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from thee. It is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into the grave. In other words, he's saying even if even if it's an, an important member, if you're right-handed and you cut off your right hand, you have to learn completely all over again. You have to retrain your hand, your left hand, to actually do what your right hand normally did. And that's what he's saying. If you, Even if it means you have to literally go back to the basic, which some members are doing, if you're having to go back to the basic and retrain, cut off those members that are going to infect the whole body, retrain, it, so be it. 
How many, there's a reason for 28 years we've gone back to the beginning, back to the beginning, back to the beginning. Why? Because we keep going back and trying to get rid of that infection. And sometimes we don't catch it in time. A lot of doctors don't. A lot of physicians don't. Do you think if Yahshua would have caught it in time, he would have gotten rid of Judas? Think about it. And it was meant that way. It was planned, okay? Now watch. <clears throat> Ezekiel 34. What did I say? Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel 1. 34. Yeah, this one. And I, I fully understand that when Dad was here, a lot of the things he spoke of, kind of like Peter said of Paul, they were hard to understand. And because, at the time, we were not where we should have been. Otherwise, we would have. But also because Dad didn't have a... What's the word? He didn't have an ability to break everything down and explain it word for word. And the reason why I say it is because he didn't have access to a computer. He didn't have access to an interlinear where he could you know, reveal every every word. He had to literally open up the concordance to find it. So it was a lot a lot harder manual labor to do rather than just going word for word. Whereas we have the ability to. Alright? So on on that aspect of it there was a lot of things he taught that we just were not able to hear. All right, And if a member, as I was saying before, if a member of the body does not receive the word and receive it where it's supposed to be, it will start feeding on itself. And these become reprobates. Lisa Casey is a perfect example. Bill McGinnis, perfect example. They begin feeding on themselves and there's no nutrition. And it's not because it's not being fed to them, it's because they're not accepting it. Alright? It's kind of like when an appendix, it, why does it go bad? It becomes infected. Why does it become infected? Because it's received too much of the wrong nourishment. Too many toxins. Too many outside influences. Same thing with the pancreas. It receives too much sugar and overabounds of sugar, so it first becomes diabetic. Or the opposite direction. It just depends on the body, whatever it's needing. Like me at work, I can usually tell when, when I'm, I'm needing some kind of energy or some kind of sugar because you just start getting sluggish. Not enough air, not enough oxygen, not enough breath to get up and do anything. So immediately I go get a drink, something sweet, I'm done. Alright? Because I normally don't eat sweets. That's why I know I can usually tell I need something, some kind of sugar for energy. But anyway, verse 9, Ezekiel 34, 9. Therefore, O you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Now who's he talking to? Okay, so why is he reprimanding the shepherds and saying, look, you need to hear the word of Yahweh. Because they are feeding on themselves. Watch this. Thus saith Master Yahweh, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. I want to reread that, because this is exactly what we're talking about. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more.
In other words, all they're doing is feasting on their own BS, mm -hmm. for lack of better words. They're only regurgitating what they've heard and eating it up again. Second Peter, it explains it in detail. They are the sow that was washed, returning unto its own mud. The dog that vomits is returning to its own vomit. That's what they are. That's what it means to feed on yourself. You're just spewing the same bullcrap BS over and over and over. That's why when you step in any one of the churches, it's the same message. Retold in a different manner. Retold in a different way. Yeah, every once in a while you may hear something fresh, something new. That goes right back to the scripture. They're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because the truth would set them free from the repeat messages. It would set them free from feeding on themselves. Watch this. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Hello? For thus saith the Master Yahweh, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Did he say I will search for my sheep? Or did he say I will search my sheep? I will search them. Meaning I'm going to go through. I'm going to find every imperfection. Every rotten. Every infection. And I'm going to remove it. That's what Passover is about. That's what unleavened bread is about. It's about getting rid of the leaven out of our lives. It's about getting rid of the leaven out of our mouth. The gossip. The infectious words. Because it's true. You know what? You could say all kinds of words to hurt somebody. And did you know you can never take those words back? What you've said, they're there. Think about it. You can never take words back. You can take a lot of things back. I could give you all kinds of stuff. I could give you a lawnmower. I could give you a weed eater. I could give you a knife. I could stab you in the back of the neck and still raise you from the dead. Bring you back. But your words you can never return. Why do you think Yahweh said, My word shall not return unto me void? It will not return empty. It will prosper wherever it is sent. If you say with your mouth, Oh, that just kills me. You just committed suicide. You just prophesied your own death. Is everybody understood? Saying, oh, my back kills me, or my neck kills me, or my hip kills me. That's right. You just prophesied that it will kill you. It will be the death of you. It will drag you down to the depths of hell. The great. And you can't take them back. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. Watch this. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock the day that he is among his sheep, among his sheep, among his sheep, how many know that during the Exodus, during the Passover and Exodus, he was present? Did you know that? He was the death angel. Did he not say, I will go forth and I will kill the firstborn of Egypt? Yes, he did. It was he himself that went through and slaughtered him. Why? Because they would not let his firstborn go. Watch this. As a shepherd seek out his flock and they that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. What is a cloudy and a dark day? What is a cloudy and dark day? Okay. Dark day has to do with ignorance. What does the cloud represent? Huh? Nope. It's when the sons are baptized in the cloud. 
When the people start seeing and realizing that, hey, these guys are baptized in the cloud, just as Moses was, just as Joshua was, just as Peter, James, and John were, just as Elijah was, they're going to start seeing, wait a minute, these guys know what they're talking about. They are where we can get our nourishment. They have the word. These guys who have their 10 million member congregations, they don't have crap. All they're doing is feeding on themselves. Now watch this. I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries. I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel. Of where? Did you know where you are sitting? Literally, physically, right now, on a mountain of Israel. And I'm not speaking of America. And I'm not speaking of a physical place. Any place where he has placed his name is a mountain. Now watch this. I will bring them unto their own land, feed them upon the mountains of Israel. Notice it's mountains, not mountain. Mountains, that's plural. There are many mountains of Israel. I happen to be one. Dad was one. Randy's another one. And Randy caught it. And I'm glad he did. And the Holy Spirit showed me, shared this with me just before we had the message. He caught him while he was getting ready to get too high. He's allowing him to rebuild and start fresh. That's going to make four times. Think about it. Now watch. Probably. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers. If you look up Hebrew, that's actually one word. River, not plural. By the river. Who's the river? Yahshua. In other words, they are by Yahshua. The mountains of Israel are by Yahshua. And in all the inhabited places of the country. So all the mountains of Israel are in all the inhabited places of the country. Now, I want to show you this because the word country, this is interesting, does not mean country. It means the earth. They are in all places of the earth. Every inhabited place is a mountain. There is a mountain of Israel somewhere. Now, Paul made the statement in, the, in uh, I believe it's Corinthians, that we cannot we cannot go anywhere where another minister is preaching Yahshua Messiah, because that is not our measure of rule. We can only reside within our measure of rule. Just like for an example, I cannot go to Kansas City because there are other members prophesying and teaching of Yahshua. I can't go to Springfield. There's other people preaching of, of Yahshua. That would be beyond my measure of rule. I would actually be stepping into their measure of rule. All right. So I'd have to go someplace where he's not taught. And there's a principle behind that. We'll get that one of these days. Anyway. I will feed them in a good pasture upon the high mountains of Israel. Shall their fold be? There shall, there shall they lie down in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. So in other words, the mountains of Israel are, are where they can feed. A mountain is where you can feed and get nourishment and live and survive. But it's where you can learn of eternal judgment as well, of eternal life. Now watch. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith Master Yahweh. I will seek them which was lost. Pay attention. Watch where he's sending the lost. 
and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken are you telling me go lay down and go sleep shut the TV off are you telling me that there is a way to preserve the organ in the body just by binding it up think about it if you have somebody running their mouth all the time and you bind up their mouth, will they listen? They would have to, wouldn't they? They'd be forced to. Now watch this. Where was I at? Thank you. I will seek that which was lost and, and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. The fat is referring to those that feed fed upon themselves. Another thing of feeding upon yourself is you become prideful. That's what Lucifer did and that's what got him cast out of heaven. He began feeding on the own iniquity in his heart. Let me show you that. Let me finish 16. I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with what? Now, is he talking about the sheep or is he talking about the strong and the weak or the strong and the fat? Okay, it's feeding the sheep, the judgment. Because in other places, he said, I will feed my, my people with judgment. That's what it's for. Judgment, and, and understand this and write it down. Judgment is a food. It is a meal. It is something you can feast upon. What was the, what was the whole principle of the children of Israel walking through the wilderness? It was a nine-day journey. It took them 40 years. What was the reason why it took them 40 years? Murmuring and complaining. Gossiping back and forth, one another. Pay attention to this. That's what drove them around the mountain. It was a nine-day trip. They could have been there in nine days. They could have been feeding on judgment. But instead... They fed themselves. Is everybody following that? So, for 40 years, he had to end up sending them quail, sending them manna, just to sustain them in their disobedience. Hello? For the sake of 300,000 that, that died in the earthquake, the other ones had to abide just because of those 300,000. Is everybody following this? They just had to keep doing it and going around the mountain because of that, those 300,000. When the rest could have just said, you know what, we're casting you out because you're infectious. If you want to go back to Egypt, you go right ahead. We're not. And they could have went right on in the promised land. Nine day journey. Instead, yeah. instead, they decided to stay with them. That was the whole principle of Korah. Korah was trying to infect the rest of the group. Now watch. Jude 10. Jude 10. No, not Jew. Jude. 
And mind you, what I just showed you <clears throat> was his judgment against, or his indictment against the, sh the shepherds, which are the pastors. Okay? Now watch this, verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, Yahweh rebuked thee. But these speak evil. Oh, excuse me. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Now this he's talking about the murmurers and complainers. Watch this. But what they know naturally in the flesh as brute beasts or behemoths Hello. Where is the behemoth strength? Job 40 explains it. It's in his loins. Meaning he's only led by the lust of his flesh. Now watch. In those things they corrupt themselves. I'm sorry, they what? They corrupt themselves. Nobody's there corrupting them. Peter and Paul, John, James, they all speak of these guys who are feeding themselves. And you can go and, and check it out. They all say the same prophecy. They all speak the same thing. They feed themselves. And they're looking for sheep. They're looking for Yahweh's people to feed upon. Now watch. Woe unto them, they have gone in the way of Cain, ran greedily after the arrow of Balaam for reward. If you want to know the truth about the book of Revelation, buy my book for $29.95. That's the reward of Balaam. So here's a little preview of next week's message. For $30, you can have it free of charge. Just offer a donation. Same thing. For a charitable donation, we can give you the whole complete series of blah, 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 blah. It's no different. Tell them you will never send them money and watch how fast they send you their videos and their messages. you never get them. You won't. Trust me, I've tried. I did it with two of them. They would not send me anything. Still haven't as they received anything. Just, I did it just to see if they would, and they won't. Yeah. If you don't pay for it, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. If you don't send some kind of cash for it, I don't care, or even if it's a dollar, you still won't get it. I don't care if you sent them $30. You might get it then. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And perished in the gainsaying, the talking back of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. Spots. These are. Let's let's take a, look, a better look at that word. Spots. More like gangrene. Infection. These are infections in your spots of love. Or in your feasts of love. What is Passover? What is unleavened bread? What is Pentecost? What is the feast of harvest? What is the Day of Atonement? What is what is Feast of Tabernacles? They're love feasts. Those are the three times we were commanded to come together to meet Yahweh. Because we love Him. Hello? Notice they also appear at the same feast. I, I think it's funny. Her doctor, Nemeth, the the baby doctor, whatever you call her, OBGYN, mm -hmm. is taking vacation this week. It's Passover. Mm -hmm. She's a Jew. Mm. Hello. Next month, uh, Keith Moore and them are taking their week of increase during Easter, which is also the Pharisaical Jews, Passover. 
Is not anybody seeing the equation? Mm -hmm. All they're doing is adopting the same feast weeks and moving them to where the pagan feast weeks are. They're trying to drag us in with them. Now watch. These are spots or cancer cells, infections in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without what? Respect, fear, reverence. They know they don't give him half the time. They know they don't revere him. They're just coming in to say, well, we do. You know we do. You know we love you. Yeah, I'll buy your message. Why? It's free. Oh, but let me give you something for it. All the other churches. No, I am not taking a bribe. Hello? To even to even accept anything for a message is a bribe. The same thing you always said not to do. It blinds the eyes of who? The wise. It blinds the eyes of the wise, the word says. Watch this. Clouds they are. Without water. This is found in the book of Psalms also. Let me show you something. <clears throat> Where was I at? Sorry, Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 25 real quick. Because this this explains what what Jude, Paul, Peter, all the rest of them are talking about. This explains who the clouds are and what it means to be without water. Everybody there? Proverbs 25, verse 14. Whoso boasteth himself once you highlight that whoso boasteth himself of a false gift come to our our week of increase because we were laying hands on the sick and watching them recover we're gonna have healing sessions we're gonna have a speaking in tongues event where I mean we're gonna have all kinds of events healing you're going to see mass, mass, in my words, a mass hysteria of psychotic advances going through the members of the church. Because it's no different. Whoso boasts himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. So what Jude is actually saying is these guys who are clouds without water... <coughs> They are boasting of false gifts. These are not actual gifts from the Holy Spirit. These are liars. Now watch. Clouds they are without water, Jude 12. <coughs> carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. Now, what happens to a fruit tree when it does not produce fruit? <coughs> what? It withers. It slowly but surely withers. It still looks pretty. It still looks like it's growing, but it's withering. And you won't see it for a long time. I've got four trees up here in the, in the orchard right now that aren't producing crap. Yeah, haven't been producing for years. We might get one or two, and by the time it, it even matures enough to come off, it's rotted. Watch this. Without fruit, there you go. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, I can remember a prophecy I was given 
Not long after Dad left, I sent it to a couple of the ministers, one of them in Branson, and I watched the video of him bad-mouthing the prophecy. It didn't come from me. You can ask Mom. There's no way that could have come from me. I don't even know that kind of information. And he bad-mouthed him. Foaming at his own shame. No. Hmm. Watch this. Foaming at their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. You mean Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, guys like them? Are reserved for darkness forever? Yep. They're feeding on themselves. I want you to, to pay attention to this. Because there's a scripture, I believe it's in Isaiah, where, where Yahweh makes a statement. He said, all the, the gods, the deities that you've built for yourself, they neither speak nor hear. I've heard Randy, or not Randy, I've heard Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore, all these guys say, oh, well, I just got a message from the Lord. The Lord doesn't speak. Hello? It's a graven image. Baal was a graven image. So how could he speak? They're prophesying of the deceit of their own heart. That's what the Word says. They are feeding on themselves. And several of us here, I'm not going to name names, several of us here used to do it constantly. I heard, what did you hear? When people say it to me, I'm very cautious. And I'm very leery about what's being said. Because scripture either testifies and backs it up, or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you best shut your mouth. Because you're indicting yourself. You're calling judgment down on yourself. If you don't believe me, go search the scriptures. You'll find it. Watch. <clears throat> Raging waves of the sea foaming at their own shame. Wandering stars, the humans reserved the black, oops, sorry, blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these. Wait a minute, what? Enoch, even back to the days of Enoch, prophesied of these. So you're telling me that these guys have been in every generation since Enoch. Yep. They are in every generation. And they will come to a point where there will no longer be a generation for them. We're going to cut off the infections. It's called judgment. That's what eternal judgment's about. Watch. Prophesied of these saying, Behold, Yahweh cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all. I just told you. That's what judgment is about. To convince all that are unrighteous among them of all their unrighteous deeds which they have unrighteously committed and of all their hard speeches. Notice that's not even in there. The word actually is hardness. And it means the stoutness of their heart. They have built their heart up as a fortress against him. Pride. Are you listening? That's what pride is. It's building up a fortress around your heart to where his word can't get in. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. Um, where was I at? Yes. Of all their hardness, which unrighteous sinners have spoken against them, these are murmurous complainers walking after their own lusts, their mouth speaking great swelling words, or great swellings, having men's persons in admiration because of what? Okay, in other words, it benefited them. If there's nothing about you or nothing that you have that will benefit me, I'm not going to worry with you. I'm not even going to mess with you. That's what he's saying. That's what these guys are doing. 
If there's nothing about you that I can profit, I'm not even going to mess with you. Mm -hmm. You go tell Kenneth Copeland or Jesse DePlantis that the 5,000 members in his church have no money. Zero. Zilch. Zip. Watch how fast they shut the doors. Mm -hmm. they wouldn't huh. Of course not. When they find out they have to fit the bill and they have to pay all the bills of the electric and all that, how fast are they going to keep it open? How long are they going to keep it open? They're going to shut it down quick. And I'm not just indicting them, I'm, I'm indicting all of them. And if people want to call me a false prophet, you be all you want to be. Do it all you want. Because judgment's coming against you. Watch. Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> Proverbs 28 well actually I was going to show you Leviathan himself Job 41 Now, everybody here should understand who Leviathan is. He's one of the chief princes or the chief demons that, that was cast out with Lucifer. Okay? Now, how many know that spirit can inhabit spirit? Spirit can inhabit spirit. If if Yahweh can inhabit all his all his hosts of heaven at the same time, he can inhabit all of us at the same time. Therefore, spirit can inhabit spirit. All of the spirits, and I'm going to explain this real clear because it's also found in the book of Enoch. All the spirits that fell, the third of the stars that fell mm -hmm. with Lucifer, were all in Lucifer at one time. Oh, okay. They were all in Lucifer at one time. He became a multiple personality. Where do you think they, that we get the idea? So he just dumped out all of all the spirit, all of the spirit. Yep. Spirit, all of yep. He removed Yahweh's spirit from himself and took on all his different personalities. So the plane, huh? Think about this a minute. It only makes sense. If Yahweh can inhabit everything in the universe, he wanted to be like him. Now watch this. Because this explains it all. This here is the story of Leviathan, the person that was in his heart. In Lucifer's heart. And it's in 99% of mankind. This is the sin that, that Adam took out of the garden. When he wanted to be a god, an almighty one, watch. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? This is verse 1. Or his tongue with a cord, which thou let us down? Job 41.1. Thank you. Or his tongue with a cord, which thou let us down? I'm going to read that again. Verse 1. Canst thou draw out? This is Yahweh speaking to Job. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which you let down? You did it. You let him free. Canst thou put a hook, a hook in his nose, or bore his jaw through the thorn? Will he make many supplications? Is he going to beg and plead with you? Is he going to beg you to let him go? And he will never touch you again. No, he won't. This was this was the entity himself that caused Lucifer to fall. Do you really think he's going to back? He wouldn't step down from Elohim. What makes you think he's going to stand down for you? Pay attention to this because Yahweh is explaining a, a battle to Job and how to do it right. Watch. Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? 
You mean at some point he's a servant? Yes, he does. Because if you are not cautious and you're not getting nutrition from the word, you will feed on him. It becomes pride. Watch. I'm gonna I can already see I'm gonna have to make this a 2.2. Verse 5, Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet for him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with his fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Do it. Lay your hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do it no more. Behold the hope of him. Or see, look and see. The hope of him is in vain. His faith is in vain. I want you to write this down. The hope of a prideful person, or the faith of a prideful person, person is in vain. That's what he just said. I'm not adding to his words, and I will not. The faith of pride is in vain. Faith or faith? Faith. T-H. T-H. F-A-I-T-H. The faith of pride or the faith in pride is in vain. It's empty. It's useless. It will take you nowhere. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's where most people are in the churches. And I'm speaking the truth. Watch. Shall not one be cast down, even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Did you just see that? Let me read it again. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Nobody is, is so violent that they will literally go into their own heart and try to stir him up to battle him. Now watch this. Who then is able to stand before me? Meaning every man's got it. Every man has got the spirit of pride in him. And as long as you have pride in you, your faith is in vain. It's in vain. That's why he said, do the battle. Lay your hand upon him and do the battle. Stir him up. It'll be the, the one battle you'll remember the rest of your life. And then you will. I've met him face to face. I know what I'm talking about. He is a nasty, fugly looking creature. He looks like a man. Well, he looks he looks like a serpent man, for lack of better words. He turns into a reptile, but he has all the all the features of a man. What? It sounds weird, but it's true. I was just thinking back to our conversation with Carter. Oh about yeah. Shape shifting. Yeah, it's that's pretty much what it is. It's shape shifting. No. No. When I seen him, he was wearing a business suit and a tie, and he looked just like a security guard, and then he transformed into Leviathan. And he was a fugly looking creature. Kind of looked like a gecko, almost. <laughs> Except he was a big looking, nasty, beady eyed. Anyway, let's read it. Verse 11 Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. This is Leviathan talking. Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. No, this is still Leviathan speaking. Watch this. I will not conceal his parts. I'm not going to cover up your privates. I want the whole world to see him. Watch. What are we what are we seeing on TV? Yeah. Watch. Nor his power, his lust, 
nor his comely proportion. I'm going to I'm going to show beauty all over the world. The arrogance. Now watch. Who can discover the face of his garment or who can come to him with his double bridle? What is a double bridle? Pretty much. It's two-faced. He'll talk pleasant and nice to you to your face, and as soon as you turn your back, he'll stab you in the back. To your face, oh, Jane, you're so righteous. You turn your back on me, and I go right to the Father and say, you know what, she is a lying, backstabbing son of a you-know-what. He's the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Who can discover the face? of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle, who can open the doors of his face. Face, His teeth are terrible roundabout. And they are. I mean, they, he thought I was ugly. Wait till you meet him. <clears throat> Watch. His scales are his pride. Where are the scales? I used to always think the scales were, were over the eyes. It's not. It's over the heart. It covers the heart. Now watch, and I'll show you this. Shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no spirit can come between them. Not even the spirit of Yahweh himself. That's how much he has fortified his heart. That's why the word says he will be cast out in the last days. He'll be judged to death. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. They cannot be marist most. Here's a little secret. You might want to write it down. As long as you got pride, you cannot be marist most. Pride has to be dealt with first. We just got done reading it. It's the scales. They cover the heart. No spirit can come between. They cannot be marist most. Therefore, it has, the battle has to be won first. And I thank you, Father, for showing us that. Because that is what everybody here has been needing. Pride has to be dealt with first. Before marist most can occur. And we will continue this next week. Yeah. The girls are right. Well, one of them's right there. Any questions?